Okay, uh, I think we can start. Uh, welcome everyone to this week's Autonomy Talks. Uh, this week is a pleasure to have with us uh, Dr. Antoine Girard, who is a senior researcher at CNRS uh, in France and is a member of the Laboratory of Signals and Systems. So something about Antoine, uh, he received his PhD in Applied Mathematics from the Grenoble Institute of Technology in 2004. He then was a postdoctoral uh, researcher, first at the University of Pennsylvania, and then uh, at the Université of Grenoble Alpes. And then from 2006 to 2015, he was uh, first an assistant and then an associate professor uh, still at the University of Grenoble Alpes. His research interest deal with the analysis and control of hybrid systems uh, with an emphasis on computational approaches, formal methods, and applications to cyber physical systems. Mm -hmm. As you see in the bio that I forwarded, he received a number of awards. Uh, I will just mention Capo, uh, the George Axelby Outstanding Paper Award, and uh, importantly, the ERC Consolidator Grant. Today, he, is, uh, he will talk about symbolic control of nonlinear systems with uh, insights about safety, optimization, and learning. I find the topic extremely fascinating, and that's why I'm excited to hear more about it. And I let you the stage, Antoine. Right, the stage is yours. Thank you, Julie, for the invitation. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, attending the talk. So today, I'm going to, to talk about a, a control method for, for nonlinear systems. And uh, this control method is, uh, is uh, what we call symbolic control. And uh, I'm going to uh, uh, emphasize that uh, uh, this method is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is good for systems with uh, safety critical constraints requirements. And uh, then I will show also that uh, uh, beyond safety, we can use this type of method to uh, design systems that have high performances and also learning capabilities. So um, let's start with uh, symbolic control. So what is symbolic control? It's a method that has, I mean, it's initiated like maybe 20 years ago now. And it's a computational approach to uh, controller synthesis. And uh, the main idea is to use um, symbolic, that is, that are finite state uh, abstractions or approximations of, uh, of dynamical systems. So the main uh, um, appeal of, of the approach is that it applies to very general nonlinear systems with uh, input and state constraints, and uh, it can also handle bounded uncertainties. And uh, the, the, why is it a powerful technique? It's powerful because uh, if you use this technique, you can provide uh, mathematical correctness of the controllers that you've synthesized uh, using these uh, finite state abstractions. Then, uh, as I said, uh, the approach is uh, computational, and maybe sometimes it's uh, it's a bit heavy on computations. But then most of the computations are done offline, and online the the computational burden is not so so heavy. So here you have like two books, which uh, are like very good introductions to uh, to the field if you're interested uh in the, in knowing more about the field so the first book is a book by paulo tabuada the second one is a book by kevin belta and, and, and co-authors okay so in one picture this is uh the main steps of the of the symbolic control approach so we start initially uh from uh, um, a model of the system which can be continuous or hybrid and then we have some uh, specifications, like maybe safety specifications. And then the first step of the approach is going to uh, 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 go from the continuous domain to a purely discrete domain. And this step is called abstraction. So we start from a continuous problem and we go to something that is purely discrete, right? Discrete, which means that it's not only discrete time, it means that everything can be finitely uh, represented. Then, uh, because everything is finite, uh, it's easy to synthesize, to solve problems uh, in, in, in that space, discrete space. And there are algorithms that, for instance, help us solving, synthesizing controllers for various specifications uh, in the discrete domain. Then we obtain a controller, 
which we call symbolic controller because it's obtained in that symbolic domain. And then we have a third step, which is the refinement, which allows to go back from discrete to continuous and to uh, map this uh, discrete controller to a continuous controller for the original system. So this is the main uh, uh, picture describing the main steps of the, uh, of the symbolic control approach. And now I'm, I'm going to, to talk more about this approach. And uh, the outline of the talk will be uh, as follows. First, I will start with uh, um, fundamentals of uh, symbolic control. And um, I will present like very uh, classical results for people that are not familiar with the method. So I will show how we can compute this discrete abstraction of some uh, nonlinear continuous uh, uh, system. I will show how we can use this abstraction to synthesize uh, controllers for safety requirements and also how we can use this uh, uh, abstraction to do some uh, performance optimization. <clears throat> and then in the second part of the talk, I'm going to uh, uh, present uh, more recent works uh, that we did in our group in, on that topic. And uh, the first uh, point I will uh, talk about is um, about how we can use a combination of uh, symbolic control and, uh, and model predictive control in order to uh, design uh, high performance controllers for uh, nonlinear systems. Uh, with uh, safety guarantees. And then in the last part of the talk, I will, uh, I will present um, some work that we are doing right now in the group on uh, how we can move from uh, a model-based symbolic control approach to a data-driven symbolic control approach where essentially we go directly from data to the symbolic model, and we don't need a continuous model describing the original system at first. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, the outline of the of the presentation. So I would like to to thank my uh, collaborators uh, before I start the presentation, and uh, um, I mean the work that I uh, will present today has been done with uh, uh, these people. So the, the older work on, uh, on, let's say, the classical symbolic control approach, this is most mainly uh, uh, from uh, Pierre-Jean Meyer's thesis. Um, so uh, he, he did his thesis uh, five or six years ago now. I think now he's a, um, he's a researcher in uh, uh, Université Gustave Eiffel in France. And, uh, and then uh, on the most recent uh, um, topics, so the work on uh, the combination of symbolic control and MPC has been done by Zakia uh, Azaki, who was a master student in the group and was co-advised with uh, uh, Professor Sorino Laroux. And uh, the work on data-driven data symbolic control was done by Anas McDaisy in collaboration with Laurent Frigo. <clears throat> okay, so let's start. And uh, so we're going to uh, consider first uh, uh, a control problem. And uh, so the problem that we, uh, that we consider is the following. We have a, a nonlinear system. Um, so everything is discrete time to, to make it simpler in the presentation. So we consider a nonlinear system and uh, we have like state and input constraints. So the dynamics of the system is as follow xt plus one is a function of xt and ut and uh, xt the state is constrained to be in some set x and the input is also constrained to be in some set u <clears throat> um, these sets in general they can be non-convex we don't uh, impose any uh, uh, assumption on that and uh, typically uh, this set they can be used to uh, specify some safety requirements right so x for instance, can specify some um, uh, some some like safety region in the state space, and you can uh, specify some like uh, uh, saturation uh, bounds uh, for the for the actuators. <laughs> um, so you have this here, a set of state X. You they don't need to be convex and. Uh, Let's say we have an objective, which is to synthesize a controller 
such that uh, we keep the state of the system which is within that set X at all, uh, at all time. So let's start with that problem. And uh, well, in general, this is a, a, a difficult problem, uh, <laughs> uh, particularly for uh, nonlinear systems with uh, uh, non-convex uh, sets of, uh, of uh, states and inputs. So uh, symbolic control uh, allows us to solve this problem. And uh, the way to do that is to uh, compute uh, discrete abstraction. And uh, the way we do that, so we're going to discretize somehow the system. And to, uh, for that, uh, uh, to do that, we're going to use a partition of the state space. So we use a finite partition of Rn. And uh, so the partition is, uh, uh, is OK, we have a, um, so we have elements of the partition, which uh, are represented here in green. And whose union define a subset of the of the constraint set X, right? We have this constraint here, and then we have one special element of the partition, which is Q out, which is uh, used to represent all of the region that is uh, outside the green region. So, which is the 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 let's say the the uh, here it's, it represents somehow the unsafe uh, states of the system. So we have this partition of the system. So um, here are these green cells, and uh, we're going to discretize the, uh, the, the set of inputs using a, a, a finite sample of, uh, of inputs. So here we have uh, uh, different values for use that you can see here represented by blue dots on this figure. So we start by doing this, right? And then uh, we're going to define a symbolic dynamical system where the set of states will be Q and the set of inputs will be P and Q and P. So Q is just the, the index set of the partition and P is the index set of the, of, of the discretization, right? So you have uh, the, the states and inputs of the, of the abstraction. There are like a, a, a set of uh, indices. And uh, we're going to define some, uh, <clears throat> some dynamics uh, for that uh, uh, dynamical system, and which is defined uh, as follows. So for a given state, symbolic state Q, and for a symbolic input P, I can move to symbolic state Q plus if, well, in the original system, <clears throat> I can move from there is one state in the cell XQ uh, from which I can move to the cell XQ plus by applying input UP, right? So this is essentially what means this, uh, this condition here. And because in general here, this should be F, but because in general computing this F of XQ UP might be difficult, actually we can use uh, uh, some over approximation of f, so uh, a function f hat, which satisfies the following property that uh, the true reachable set f, so the states that we can that we can reach from states in xq under input up is included in, in, that, in that set here. Okay, so to, to make things uh, uh, clear, uh, this is how we, we proceed, right? So we have our partition here, right? So uh, one cell in the partition, XQ. So we uh, have trajectories that are starting from uh, 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 states in XQ for some input UP here. And uh, I'm able, let's say, to compute an over approximation of all the states that I can reach from that cell using that input. And this is this red region. Now I'm going to look at this red region. I'm going to intersect, see uh, uh, which element of the partition I intersect. So here you can see that this red region intersects with four uh, cells in the partition, XQ1, XQ2, XQ3, XQ4. And so in the abstraction, I'm going to add like transitions from the symbolic state Q for the symbolic input P to uh, all the states Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, right? So this means that in the abstraction, 
when I instead it Q and I apply input P, I can move to one of these states. And this move is in some sense not deterministic in the sense that this is not the controller that takes the decision uh, that we end up in Q1, Q2, Q3, or Q4. The controller only takes the decision to apply P. And then you know where you end is not uh, uh, the decision of the controller, but is treated as a disturbance. So <clears throat> if we uh, compute an abstraction like this, uh, what is it good for? So now let's say I have, so I have an abstraction. I'm able to compute like a controller for this, uh, 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 this discrete abstraction. So a controller is a map, right? From uh, symbolic states to symbolic inputs. And uh, so now, if I have this uh, uh, such a controller, consider like the original system in closed loop with a controller given by the following uh, form, C uh, composed with theta, which theta is the quantizer, which is uh, uh, which essentially tells us in which cell uh, to which cell X belongs. So essentially, when you have X T, you look uh, uh, to which cell of the partition xt belongs, it belongs to xq. So you're going to uh, uh, look the um, which input is mapped uh, uh, is, is map to, to q by c. And then you're going to apply this input to the system. So consider the uh, such a closed loop system. Then you can show <coughs> that uh, the trajectories of this closed loop system they are actually included in the set of, of, of trajectories of this closed loop system where this one is, is purely a uh, uh, symbol. So this is an important property and why it's important it, because for instance, if we can design a, <coughs> a controller for the symbolic system here, such that we guarantee that uh, uh, all the symbolic trajectories will remain in the safe set, then we guarantee we have a mathematical proof that uh, using this controller here, the trajectories of the continuous system will remain in the safe set forever, right? Because of this inclusion relation between the trajectories. So this means that these discrete abstraction, they are suitable to for use to design uh, controllers that provide safety guarantees for the original system. And this is really the, the, the nice properties that, uh, that these uh, abstractions have. Okay, so let's say now we have an abstraction. And uh, as uh, you see now, you, we know that if we can design a controller that keeps the state of the abstraction in some safe region, then we can transfer this result to, to the original system. So now what remains to, to be done is to, well, synthesize a controller that keeps the abstraction safe. And uh, how this can be done? Well, this can be done using uh, discrete controller synthesis. And well, how we do this? Well, we use some approach that is quite classical. Actually, we compute the maximal control invariant set. So let's say here you have an example of discrete abstraction, right? So you have nine states here and two symbolic inputs. And uh, here you see that, for instance, for Q1, you can apply input P1, and you would move either in Q2 or Q5. In Q2, you can apply input P1 or P2. If you apply P1, you end up in Q3. If you apply P2, you end up in Q6. <clears throat> so there are some missing transitions here in the system. For instance, in Q1, there is no outgoing transition for P2 because I implicitly assume that this transition, they lead to the uh, unsafe set. So I, I'm not representing them here. So what I want to do here is, is to synthesize a controller which decide which input I should use to keep the uh, my my system uh, safe 
forever. So the way I'm doing that, well, I'm going to uh, check for each uh, element here, each state, uh, which um, which stage um, from which state I can stay in that green region right now. For instance, you can see that from Q1, choosing P1, I can move to Q2 and Q5, which are in that safe region. So here I can use P1, right? And essentially I can do that for all the states, but Q6, because Q6, there is no outgoing transition here, which means that the outgoing transition actually would go to the unsafe set. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to color this Q6 as unsafe. And then I'm going to repeat the process, right? I'm going to iterate. Now I want to stay in that green region. <coughs> so from Q1, that's still okay. I can still stay in the green region. But actually now from Q3, if I apply P1, right? Uh, Q3, I just I have just the choice to apply P1 and I would move to Q6, which is now unsafe. So Q, Q3 would become unsafe, right? And so on. And I can repeat this uh, again. Then I can see that from here, Q, from Q2, I cannot avoid reaching Q3 or Q6, so Q2 become unsafe. And then from Q1, if I apply P1, then maybe I could end up in Q5, which is safe, but maybe I could end up in Q2, which is unsafe, so Q1 is unsafe as well. And then here, at this point, I reach a, uh, I reach a fixed point because uh, for the remaining uh, uh, states, I have uh, an input that uh, allows me to uh, avoid this uh, red region, right? So this means that I have computed the uh, maximal controlled invariant set, uh, which is this green set here, uh, which consists of five states. And then uh, I also have the uh, safety controller, which tells me which are the safe actions that I can use. So for instance, in Q4, I should use P2. From Q5, I should use P2. From Q9, I should use P1, and so on. So <laughs> using this algorithm and this very simple example, but which is very easy to implement on much bigger uh, examples, then I can design uh, a safety controller for my abstraction. And then from the previous theorem, I can uh, I can uh, map this, uh, this symbolic safety controller to a continuous, uh, to a safety controller for the original uh, continuous system. So um, yeah, so that's uh, mostly the the, the main uh, steps of, of the classical approach. And uh, let me show just a, a simple example now. So we're going to consider. Uh, um, a mobile robot, which is modeled by a uh, uh, unicycle. So here you have like the, the equations. And we're going to consider like uh, state and input constraints. So we have uh, uh, states constraints here, which are uh, which define uh, a non-convex set. Uh, I, I will show you the set uh, uh, on the next slide. And then I have uh, input constraint. And uh, in particular, you can see that uh, the velocity is always strictly positive. So actually, the robot cannot stop, right? It, it has to keep moving all the time. You cannot stop the robot. So basically, there is no way to uh, uh, get to some uh, uh, steady point with the robot. This is not possible. OK, so. Um, to show you, this is the, what the uh, uh, constraint set for the states look like. So it's non-convex, and you have corners here, which which are quite sharp, right? And uh, so we want to design a controller for our mobile robot that keeps uh, the uh, the robot inside this uh, this region uh, for all time. And uh, so we're doing that using the the symbolic control approach. And uh, here you can see <laughs> on, um, on this figure, the uh, uh, control invariant that we obtain uh, using the symbolic control approach. Um, so X1 and X2 are the, the, the coordinates, right? Uh, X uh, of the X1 and X2 of the robot, while X3 is the, is, is the angle. Uh, and the angle is defined like uh, uh, modulo two pi. And uh, to compute this uh, uh, controlled invariant set here, 
so we use the uh, symbolic abstraction. Uh, so the, the, our discrete abstraction here, it has like uh, about 100,000 states uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 40 uh, symbolic inputs. So you have to imagine uh, <laughs> like on the um, when you run this algorithm here, instead of having like an automata with nine states and two, two uh, inputs, you have like 100,000 states and, and 40 inputs. Um, so it takes some time to process, but uh, yeah, still for this uh, type of system, you can still man manage to do it. And uh, and for in that example, we synthesize this. Uh, this invariant in 15 minutes, right? So, of course, this is done offline. So then you have the safety controller, and uh, then to run this safety controller uh, online, there is uh, uh, very little uh, 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 computation to do online to run the controller, actually. So, right now, we uh, just talked about uh, safety, right? So, uh, when I have uh, uh, if you have a, a, a maximal, uh, if you have a, a, like a, a safety controller for the abstraction, uh, it gives you at each state what are the possible inputs that you can use uh, and that will keep the system safe. And sometimes, often, actually, it gives you like several possible inputs. And to, to pick among the, uh, to choose among the, the possible safe inputs, well, one reasonable thing to do is to uh, optimize some uh, uh, performance criteria and some, for instance, you can decide to like uh, optimize some uh, uh, running uh, performance criteria, right? So uh, in a receding horizon manner. So let's say you want to optimize that. This is your cost. Well, in symbolic control, because everything is uh, is, uh, is is finite, right? Finitely represented. Actually, this, this is an optimal control problem, and you can solve uh, the optimal control problem uh, explicitly. You can uh, solve everything offline by using the the dynamic programming approach. And uh, if you implement this, then you obtain the worst case optimal controller. Uh, for the symbolic model, and then you can map this uh, uh, optimal symbolic controller to the uh, to the continuous system uh, um, original system. So this is what we do here um, in the uh, example with the robot. So let's say um, so we have uh, the constraint that we should keep the system safe and. We have the, this uh, uh, control invariant that we designed previously, so we know how to do that. And uh, now we're going to um, uh, optimize the performance criteria, which is that we want to we want to track some uh, reference position in the in, in the region. And uh, so, for instance, uh, <clears throat> we start with an easy problem where the reference position is inside uh, the domain. And uh, here you see that uh, well, uh, you can uh, you you get what you expect, right? You approach uh, the region, and because the robot cannot stop, the best you can do is to start turning around uh, the reference point. And this is what happened here, right? Mm -hmm. Now we select a more challenging problem because the reference point is uh, in the corner here. And uh, as you can see, there is no way you can turn around this point, right? Because if you turn around this point, you would violate the, 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 the safety uh, constraint. <laughs> so here, if you optimize the, the performance criteria using symbolic control, you can see that you start approaching this uh, target and then you're going to uh, uh, cycle here and try to, uh, uh, to, to approach the target. And, and because you have to keep the system safe, then you're going to cycle like this. So, okay, you can see that here, uh, using the symbolic control approach, you can uh, synthesize controllers that uh, ensure that you have like safety, uh, that you meet safety constraints for uh, uh, nonlinear systems. Uh, and <clears throat> somehow they allow you to uh, optimize in some sense uh, one uh, uh, performance criteria. Even though here we can see that um, 
our controller, it's a bit shy, right? Uh, there would be a, a way to approach a bit closer <coughs> from this uh, <coughs> from this point, and uh, and to be still safe, right? <coughs> um, so. <coughs> Uh, um, yeah, so we could we we could be uh, 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 a bit more aggressive here uh, for that. And <coughs> why 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 do we have this problem here? Is because when we do the abstraction, we introduce some conservatism, and because of this conservatism, <coughs> then uh, well, we need to be uh, more. Uh, um, um, uh, more prudent than, than what would be really needed. Okay, so <clears throat> to improve this uh, this uh, this problem here, to, to solve this problem, to get more uh, better performances, um, what we uh, did recently is that we uh, have uh, uh, tried to uh, combine so the the symbolic control approach that uh, provide this strong safety. Uh, 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 um, guarantees with uh, with a uh, model predictive control that will allow to uh, have like very uh, high performance controller. Right? So uh, let's say we still consider the same nonlinear system with the same uh, state and input constraints, and uh, say now we want to use some uh, uh, model predictive control scheme. Right uh, to optimize some some performance criteria, and uh, while uh, enforcing the constraint. So uh, basically, what you would do is that you would write the performance criteria here, subject to well, you initialize the the the, the prediction to the the current state of the system. Then you have the model of, of the system, and then you uh, <laughs> append the constraint states. And you put constraints to uh, to 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 the optimization problem. <coughs> okay, so uh, this is like a typical MPC problem, but for safety critical systems, one needs to guarantee that the optimization problem is feasible at all time. And if you uh, actually solve this problem, maybe this problem has a solution at, at time zero time one, time two, but you don't have guarantees that you will always be able to solve this problem at all time. Uh, uh, maybe at some point you would reach a point where the, the problem is not feasible. So this property is called recursive feasibility. And one classical solution to uh, obtain a recursive feasibility is to append like a terminal constraint to the optimization problem. <laughs> like we have this, uh, uh, we still have the same cost and uh, the same constraints as before. And we add just one last uh, terminal constraint, which constrains the uh, terminal point of the prediction <laughs> horizon. And we uh, ask this point to belong to some um, maximal control invariant set. Right? Uh, if you do that, <laughs> then you guarantee that the, uh, your uh, 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 your uh, mm, optimization problem will be feasible at all time, and that you will not run into problems by using your uh, uh, model predictive controllers. So what you need is a, a control invariant set for a non for nonlinear system, subject to possibly non-convex constraints. So the problem is that uh, sometimes it's uh, it's hard to compute. I mean. You can try to use uh, uh, methods, maybe uh, like uh, uh, find a, an invariant uh, as a polynomial function or something like that. Uh, but there is no guarantee that uh, maybe it's very high degree. And uh, in general, <laughs> uh, it's you don't know uh, if you are going to be able to find a control invariant that has a, a simple representation. So what we know is that we can compute these control invariants using the symbolic control approach, <laughs> as I showed before. And uh, uh, the control invariants using the symbolic control approach, 
they are actually given by the unions of many many intervals right so um if you look at this uh union of many intervals it's not uh uh it's not differentiable, uh, it's combinatorial, and uh, so it's a mess. You don't want to use that type on invariant of invariant in the optimization problem because that wouldn't be suitable for real-time optimization. So one way to uh, 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 solve this problem is to um, do the following. Instead of having like a, a terminal constraint, which is the the, the same at all time, we're going <laughs> to use some uh, time varying terminal constraint, right? So in the optimization problem here, instead of having the uh, uh, control invariant set, we're going to have a constraint, which is XT and which depends on time T. So it's not always the same uh, <laughs> constraint. Uh, it, it can change uh, from one step to, uh, to, 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 to another. But uh, uh, so it's allowed to uh, change in time, but then it has to be simple, right? And this is the, our goal to design uh, a time varying constraint, which is simple and that, and that guarantees that we would get like a recursive feasibility. So uh, the proposed design that we have for this uh, time varying terminal constraint is the following. So let's say that. We have some uh, control invariant set and uh, an invariance controller. For instance, these are designed using uh, the symbolic control approach. And then assume you have a map T <clears throat> such that uh, you have the following property. So first T, the image of T. So T of X must be a subset of the invariant set XI. And, uh, and, uh, and then uh, also T of X must contain uh, the successor of X, uh, uh, the closed loop successor of X. Right? So these are the two conditions that must be satisfied. So if you have such a map T, then if you generate the terminal constraints of, uh, of, the, uh, of the MPC problems using this map T, then you can show that uh, uh, your uh, optimization problem will be recursively feasible. So here, the main idea is to use like um, this terminal constraint, which will guarantee recursive feasibility. <laughs> and what we want, because we want to do uh, the optimization problem online, we want this T of X and of T to be a set that is uh, uh, simple. So typically that could be like an interval. And that's what we try to do <laughs> using the symbolic control approach. So using the, the, the symbolic control approach, we already know that we can uh, synthesize the control invariant set and an invariance controller. And uh, what we can do also using symbolic control is to compute the map T, uh, which uh, to any X of X I is going to uh, uh, give us the largest interval such that <coughs> Uh, f of x and cx is in, uh, belongs to tx and which is included in xi. So essentially, is, this is the largest interval that satisfies the conditions that are needed to uh, uh, ensure uh, uh, the um, uh, recursive feasibility. So this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, model predictive scheme with uh, uh, that this time varying constraint generated by time t by map t here this is what we call the symbolically guided model predictive control because it's uh, so it's model predictive control where uh, um, the uh, constraints and the recursive feasibility are actually uh, guaranteed uh, by the use of uh, a symbolic controller so uh, let's uh, apply the approach to uh, our uh, uh, example uh, so let's take the first um, uh, case where the, we try to track a point which is in the in the middle of uh, of our uh, uh, region here, and um, so this is what you get us uh, using uh, a symbolic control uh, that I showed before. 
this is the trajectory that you would get using uh, MPC uh, without any uh, guarantees of, uh, of safety. So in that case, it works well because I mean you try to uh, to 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 uh, um, you tr yeah you you try to reach some 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 point that that is in well inside the domain so there is no problem and uh, then there is the 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 symbolically guided model predictive control where you can see that uh, um, I mean maybe the transient is a bit different from uh, uh, the MPC without any uh, terminal constraints but then in the end you reach like uh, um, like the the same uh, stationary behavior as the MPC uh, approach where you would like turn around the uh, the, the the reference point so this these are the the uh, the plots for the um, just the 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 symbolically guided uh, MPC where you can see that we're going to turn around the reference point and uh, essentially we're going to uh, uh, um, uh, use the you know turn with minimal velocity and maximal steering angle so this is as 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 close as you can stay from the from from the reference point and that's what is expected okay now let's consider the second case where we uh, try to uh, 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 approach and stay uh, uh, close to that uh, to that reference point in the corner here and this was uh, uh, um, the trajectories that we uh, were having with uh, symbolic control and remember that we were safe but like a bit uh, a bit shy right uh, we are shying away from the constraints here now, if I use model predictive control with uh, uh, without uh, uh, constraints here, then uh, uh, at the beginning I will uh, approach the, the 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 target. But uh, here, in that case, at uh, at step thirteen, uh, actually we uh, run into an infeasible uh, optimization problem. So because uh, we were not uh, providing any terminal constraints then uh, we uh, run into uh, uh, an infeasibility problem, which means that uh, for our system here, uh, we cannot guarantee that, well, we can, we can surely guarantee that now, if I continue, the robot is, is going to crash in the, in the wall. Um, and then using the, the symbolically guided model predictive control, well, then we can see that we are uh, uh, we have some uh, behavior, and and we uh, uh, where we approach the the reference point, and actually we have like also here some transient, and at the end we're going to uh, have some uh, uh, to do some figure here, which is like an eight, right? And and we're going to turn uh, like this, and uh, and uh, we can see that here the the, the safety constraints they are satisfied at all time. And uh, and uh, and we are like much more aggressive than than what uh, we can obtain with uh, just symbolic control. So we can see that by combining the the symbolic control and the MPC, we get like the the the, the safety guarantees that we had with uh, a symbolic control, but but much much better uh, uh, performances here. Uh, so these are the, the control inputs that uh, we get for the uh, uh, symbolically uh, guided MPC. So these are the, the, the sorry, this is the angle and this, these are the coordinates of the robots and these are the control inputs. So the velocity and this is the, the steering angle. And so you can see that we reach some uh, periodic behavior after some, uh, some, some transient uh, uh, phase. Okay, so that was uh, on uh, on this uh, symbolic MPC, and uh, now I don't have much time left, but I'm going to 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 uh, I try to to explain quickly uh, some recent work that we do on uh, on uh, data driven symbolic control and how we want to uh, 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 extend the previous work in order to uh, uh, do like to design safe learning approaches for nonlinear systems. So the main idea here is to, uh, so this is the classical picture of symbolic control, where we start from a continuous model, 
And now we want, we don't want to start from a continuous model. We'd like to start from data, right? And uh, if you have data, you could use data to generate a continuous model and then go to a symbolic model. But the question is, can you go directly from <coughs> the data to the, to, to the symbolic model? And uh, yeah, essentially this is what uh, I'm going to show here. And uh, so we're going to consider uh, a nonlinear system, uh, which is uh, uh, a known, and it's always subject to state and input constraints. And we're going to assume that we have a, a finite data set, which uh, is sampled from the it's is sampled from the system. And uh, what we want to do is to compute directly from this data set a symbolic model that provides formal guarantees right, for the original system. Okay, so how can we do that? So just to, uh, as a reminder, I'm going to uh, explain again how we compute a discrete abstraction and see what we need to change to do it in a data-driven fashion. So first, we're going to partition the state space as before. We're going to discretize the input space. So this is exactly as this was done before. And then I define a symbolic system where the uh, set of states and inputs, they are still the uh, index sets of the uh, uh, discretization of the partitions of the state and the discretization of the inputs. And uh, the transition map is defined as before. So uh, you have a transition here. If you, uh, uh, if the intersection of the aware approximation of the rich set from XQ under input UP with cell XQ plus is not empty. <clears throat> so what you see that the only thing you need from the system, from the model, is this f hat, right? And generally, you compute this f hat from the model of the system. So the question is, can we compute directly this f hat xqup from the the data, right? If we can compute uh, an over approximation of this reachable set from uh, from the data, then we uh, automatically get the, the the symbolic model, right, from from uh, from the data. So this is what we are going to do next. And uh, I will start with the simplest case of, uh, of monotone systems. And uh, so we have, uh, so just uh, uh, a reminder on monotone systems. So monotone system, they are system from which if I consider like uh, two states that are, uh, uh, so X1 is below X2, where below is uh, understood as, uh, as uh, uh, being smaller than or equal to uh, x2 component wise and u is uh, below u prime then the successor x1 prime x2 prime will be x1 prime will be below x2 prime right um, the characterization for discrete time system is that the partial derivative they must all be uh, positive uh, partial derivative of the system so there are many applications of such uh, uh, systems, uh, uh, like in, uh, for instance, in uh, uh, vehicle dynamics, uh, energy systems, and also biology. Um, so in monotone systems, <clears throat> so if you assume that your uh, partition is given by intervals here, then uh, to compute uh, an over approximation of your reachable set, right? So the set of state that is reachable from, uh, from, uh, from that uh, region, then it is included in the interval that is given by uh, uh, the two extremal trajectories. So the one starting from uh, uh, the, the, the lower point here and the one starting from the upper point here, right? So you can show that this reachable set is included in this interval. So to compute an over approximation, we want to actually compute an upper bound on this and a lower bound on that. That's what we need to do. Okay, let's see how we can do this from data now. So let's say I have this, uh, 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 I want to compute an upper bound of uh, this overline X U. And uh, then I have uh, data that is provided. Uh, so this, for instance, I have data. So for input X1, uh, for state x1 and input u1, I move to this uh, uh, input uh, to this state x1 plus at the next step. So now I want to uh, uh, get an over approximation of of the image of that point, right? Which is that point. So using monotonicity, I can see that uh, this point <laughs> it's below this one, right? So the image of that point should be below the image of that point, right? So 
I know that the, uh, uh, the value of this function here is below that point, right? So that's the first thing I can say. But then this point here is also below that point, right? So the image here should be also below the image of that, the, below that point here, be below the image of X5, right? So in the end, I can say that <clears throat> this, uh, 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 the image of uh, overline XU should be in this darker blue region. And so it's below that point here that I can use as uh, an over approximation. So this is the, the main idea uh, that we use to uh, compute over approximations of the reachable set. And uh, you can show that, uh, uh, yeah, so you can have like a sound over approximation of your reachable set based sol solely on data. And this is for a, a, a monotone system. Um, so, okay, the case of a monotone system is uh, is closed. Now, what can we do if we have a, a general nonlinear system? Well, if we know lower bounds on the partial derivatives of this system, there's something we can do. So, assume we have these bounds here, and now uh, we are going to introduce these matrices here, and rewrite the function f like this right f of x u then it's a minus x plus b minus u plus g x u right and g is a function right so it's f minus a minus x minus b minus u <coughs> so this g function it has been designed in such a way that it is that it is monotone so your your function f which is a known right it's the sum of some known linear function and some unknown monotone function. So essentially, you can compute the another approximation of the reachable set of this easily because, yeah, you can compute the reachable set of this unknown part and this is known. So this is simple, right? So you have the following theorem that tells us how you can compute another approximation of uh, of this uh, of this f hat. Um, okay, there, let's say um, um, I'm not going to enter into the details, but we can do this computation efficiently and we can uh, update the approximation if we have new data and we can also uh, extend this to, uh, to the boundary disturbance. So just one example here, uh, which is taken for, uh, from uh, uh, adaptive cruise control. So we, have, uh, we want to design a controller for the car here in order to uh, 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 not to crash in that car. Uh, and uh, so we collect data. We just know that the, the, the dynamics is monotone and uh, we collect like 1 million data points and uh, we compute a symbolic model and just computing the symbolic model. So with 125,000 symbolic state, 50 symbolic inputs, just computing the symbolic model using this data point, it takes less than one second. So this is like very, very efficient tool. And then using the symbolic model, you can compute like here the safety controller and the maximal control environment. Okay, let me let me uh, conclude. And uh, uh, so, in this talk, I uh, talked about symbolic control, and uh, I hope that I convince you that uh, it's a powerful technique that is mostly computational for uh, safety critical control of nonlinear systems with uh, state and input constraints. And that uh, uh, this uh, symbolic control technique, it, maybe it's uh, uh, the performances of this controller, they are quite limited, but uh, they can be like drastically improved if you combine them with MPC. And uh, that if you do that, you, you still retain the safety guarantees. And uh, then in the last part of the talk, I showed how we can actually, we don't need the original model of the system, when, but that we can directly go from data to symbolic models. And that we, uh, this opened the way to, uh, to like safe learning based control approach for, for nonlinear systems. So uh, some uh, current and future work in our group. So we have like, uh, we're currently working on uh, uh, symbolically guided MPC for more complex navigation problems. For instance, um, with the temporal logic specifications, and we're also uh, working on the combination of symbolically guided MPC and data-driven abstractions to design like safe learning-based MPC for nonlinear systems. 
And I take the occasion to uh, uh, advertise like uh, positions. We are looking for PhD candidates for uh, starting in fall 2023 to work on this subject. So if you know people that are interested, uh, please uh, tell them to contact me. Thank you for your uh, attention. And uh, here are like a list of references uh, if you are interested in, in, in the topics developed in the talk. Thank you very much, Antoine, for the great talk. Uh, let's open now the stage for questions. So you can either raise your hand and I will call you, or you can type the question in the chat and I will read it for you. <clears throat> let's see, is there any icebreaker? I can go first. Uh, actually, a uh, very interesting talk also. I really like the, the intro to the topic. Uh, a question that this is spontaneous also uh, regarding the future applications for uh, for temporal logic and so on is what role does uh, uh, the sampling or the partitioning of, of the inputs in the beginning uh, play? So is that uh, something that plays a big role for the efficiency uh, to targeted problems? Okay, so um, yeah, it's, uh, Let's say it, the, the, the partitioning and the discretizing has uh, discretization has to be fine enough uh, 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 in order to get like uh, uh, good uh, points and to, to get a, a good environment for the system. Like, uh, if you want, if I go back to the, to the example of the, uh, of the robots here, right? Where you uh, get this invariant here. If you pick less uh, less states here, it, it it may be the case that you are not able to find an invariant, right? So uh, there is some compromise to be found between the. So you need in sufficient number of states to to be able to uh, find an invariant, but uh, also the more states you have and the more uh, uh, computationally demanding it will be and the more time it will take. So there is always a balance to do, uh, uh, but uh, yeah. So uh, it's not always easy. So sometimes it's uh, you you have to 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 try like several parameters, but then I mean, with experience it also helps, and you 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 just somehow uh, know how to 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 choose these parameters in such a way that that this works. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um... Another question connected to this that I have is um, now when you when you think about doing it uh, in the future works, there's this temporal logic specifications. So is the idea there that you substitute the the dynamic specification in the problem uh, formulation with these uh, temporal logic constraints, or or can you talk a bit more about that because it's really yeah. So so the the the, the only thing now the the only uh, specification strict specification that uh, that uh, I treated here is the safety specification that I want to stay in that set right in that set X, but um, <clears throat> I I could have like uh, 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 more complex uh, specifications, for instance. Uh, in that example, I could have like a specification that uh, I want the robot to, uh, to 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 visit this corner and then this corner and after this one and then this one, right? In in, in so, and and this is typically something that you can describe with the temporal logics. And the good thing is that, for instance, you, uh, you, if you use symbolic control, um, I mean, so you have a discrete, a finite representation of your system. If you have a temporal logic formula, you have a finite representation of your uh, of your specification. For instance, using a bookie automaton, and then you can, uh, using uh, automata theoretic technique, you can synthesize uh, uh, automatically a controller that would solve your uh, control problem. Right? Okay, I see. So, I see. so for, for the, I mean, for for the uh, from the symbolic control point of view, this is a closed case, right? So we know how to do that in symbolic control. I mean, uh, uh, for instance, you, I, I mentioned uh, Kenin Belta's book, and uh, you can refer to that book there. The solution is described in the book, right? So uh, you, you, we know how to do that. The, now what I want to, uh, I would like to uh, investigate is how we can uh, uh, combine this solution with uh, 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 model predictive 
control scheme in order to get like high performance uh, 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 system, uh, which have like guarantees that the specification could be met. Okay, makes sense. Very cool. Uh, is there any other question from the audience? Does it seem so? Um, maybe uh, it's uh, also my, my question. Another question was uh, Do you have a, a test bed, uh, 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 let's say, hardware test bed where you plan on testing these things, or is this for the moment being uh, too, too early? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, so we, I mean, uh, um... I'm not too much a, a hardware guy, but uh, uh, so uh, mostly now uh, it's it's been uh, 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 validated on, on on like numerical simulations. Uh, but uh, uh, in uh, in Central Supelec, we have like a, um, we now have like a robotic platform with uh, with uh, uh, mobile robots and uh, and and drones, and I guess that could be uh, 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 something that we. Uh, uh, investigate, but uh, I, yeah, I don't think I'm going to 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 jump in that alone because uh, that's not my uh, like uh, 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 main. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm not uh, uh, very qualified for that. But uh, yeah, I would be interested actually in collabor with uh, in collaborating with someone who would like to test these uh, algorithms. Yeah, exactly. It seems very promising for for. Uh for real life system. I mean, it's, it's very interesting to me. Good, it doesn't seem we have other questions. So Antoine, you deserved a, a break and I wish you a good recovery also. Thank you very much for, for taking the time and uh, good luck for, for the next steps. Thank you. And, and uh, thank you again and see you all next week for the next autonomy <laughs> talk. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.